Welcome back to Staying and Stay Safe. Sorry it's been a little while working on a commission, so I haven't been able to do one. But on this episode, I've decided to paint an album cover. So I selected an album cover, oh, hello, uh, that I liked. Okay, so I've got a canvas board here and I've gridded it up. It's not quite square, so I had to make it square the same as a CD cover. So pick any album cover you like. Pick the, you know, uh, you can choose anything, any type of artwork. It can be a drawing, painting, whatever. But I've got here and I've put in three lines going up, three lines going down to sort of, you know, basically do the same on the canvas board. So three lines going horizontal, three lines going vertical. And that way it's easier to copy the cover so you can see where the lines are and you can see where tree is and where the top of the building is and all these things so it's good to do that i put it inside a bit of plastic so i wasn't actually drawing on the cd cover so you can use anything for that um but you know again just think of some of the iconic um album covers that have been out there. there's been loads um these are just a few album covers that i thought were quite iconic when i googled it these are sort of iconic album covers but you can pick any album cover then you have to choose an artist so you have to Google different artists, different eras. You've got Cubism there and uh, Rene uh, Renaissance stuff, pop art. Um, I chose Edward Hopper from the 40s, 50s. He did a lot of artwork depicting America, uh, sort of very lonely and bleak because the men were at war. So the towns were quite empty, but I like the simplicity of the buildings and the style uh, that he paints in. And um, I thought it would be a good style to choose for this particular cover that I was copying from. So. I just start drawing here with a pencil, um, plotting out where the tree goes, um, where the building goes and things like that. So, you know, remember you can choose any sort of artist. I think it'd be really interesting to see what you guys come up with. You could pick any album cover and do it in a style that's completely different. And I would love to see what you come up with. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but you know, if you just want to copy an album cover straightforward, then just do that. Cause this is almost straightforward copy. Um, but just taking away a lot of the detail because Hopper sort of did a lot of um, plain colours and flat shapes and things which I thought would also make this an easier job to do. So here I'm just, um, I'm sorry if you can see the lines by the way of the canvas. Uh, on the computer here it's showing quite a strange pattern because of the canvas but um, that might go when I uh, get rid of the, when I reduce the quality of the video. So. So here I am just using the pencil to plot out where the windows are roughly. It's not gonna be exactly the same. It's not gonna be, uh, you know, perfect, but it's just a rough idea of where it goes. And here's where the lettering will go. Just put it in roughly here and slap that on there and do that. Uh, I did do it in pen, but I just chose to, um, I didn't choose to film that really because I, I went wrong with it on that really. So here I am painting in the bulk of the sky color. Um, so I'm looking at the CD cover and I'm thinking, well, Hopper did a lot of sort of more bluish skies. So I kind of added a bit more color to this. So it's a, there's a bit more color in this album cover than, um, than there actually is. Um, the sky is quite pale and white, but I added a bit more blue. So it's Prussian blue, burnt umber, a bit of black, um, just to get that really gray, dull sky color, uh, which is quite moody. I think I'll go over the lettering as well, because I think I paint the lettering back in again um, later on with, with a paintbrush. So I think I, I go over the lettering in a minute. Uh, not right now, but uh, with the buildings, I added a bit more warmth to the to the gray. So I added a bit of yellow ochre, a little bit more burnt umber, just to give the building a bit more of a warmer tone. Um, I, I always put it on too dark and then I, I have to put white back on and go back over it to lighten it up. But you can see the pencil here is blending into the the white as well which is nice because it gives you some shadows around the windows so I don't mind that happening at all really that's that's quite all right for me um, but obviously if you don't want that to happen you can uh, just go a bit lighter on the pencil marks so they're not quite so strong um, so what's happening now I'm using a flat bristle brush by the way um, so here I'm just using the same flat brush to color in um, no, actually I'm using a round brush now, pointed brush, to get some of the details in. I'm adding more black and more um, burnt umber to the mixture. I'm trying not to make it pure black because I didn't really want it to be too sharp. There's some simple shapes up here. You've got the roof tiles. But again, I didn't want to put too much detail in. I wanted to keep it kind of like Edward Hopper's work where it's quite simplistic. Uh, it shows the shadows and the shapes rather than the details of the 
windows. So I didn't put too much detail into the windows. I just sort of blocked in the color, really, with this, um, this is a, a cheap school brush from artdiscount.com. Great place to get uh, oil. Oh, this is oil paint, by the way. I'm not sure I mentioned that at all, but this could be done in acrylic or oil. Acrylic would dry quicker, so it's a good, it's a good suggestion to use acrylic or oil. I would paint in the same way. So this is Eric Clapton now. I'm putting him in. Uh, again, I'm keeping it simple. Um, it's so small that it's almost impossible to do lots of detail, especially with the roughness of the canvas board. It's very hard to put detail. If I was going to do something this small, I would probably use MDF or something smooth to paint on so that you don't get all these sort of little holes and things. You don't get the texture of the canvas. So he's got a little bit of patch of white on his jeans there, just to show his knees lifted up slightly and a bit of reflection on his leg, the one that's coming forward. Um, it's all just looking at the just the brightest marks and the dark shadows and picking them out. He's got a bit of a glow around the edge of him. Sunlight's just sort of behind him. Um, so I'm just putting this little bit of white back on there, give that a bit of a glow around the edge. And I think I'll go with the, what did I do, skin color now? Skin color, I used the yellow ochre, crimson, and a bit of the gray that I already had. So it's quite a dull skin tone because he's in shadow. So it's just a little bit of, tiny bit of crimson, tiny bit of yellow ochre to give that kind of skin sort of look. The hair is burnt umber in black, but because it blended in so well with the window behind, I went back and highlighted the edge of that. And the beard, I don't know, I just did a little mark there, a little bit, <laughs> just a rough idea of a beard. You can see it's so tiny that you just get a hint of it, really. His, his arms are folded, so just put some shadow in there. The same colours, burnt umber and, and black, just to add a bit of shadow there to give a bit, a bit of a shape to him. Um, you can be quite quick with this, you don't have to worry. This is a bit of, uh, a bit of, cam uh, a bit of yellow and yellow ochre just to get a bit of light around the edge of the head there. He's got a bit of sunlight reflecting behind him. And that just brings out the shape of the head a bit more against the window as well, so you can see him a bit clearer. Um, and now we go on to doing the tree where I use sap green. Um, I have I have a few greens that I sort of bought little tubes to test them, you know, but sap green is probably the easiest one to use for anything really, grass or trees. You start with that as a base and you can make it darker with burnt umber, or you can make it lighter with le lemon yellow or, um, so that's what I did. I started here with the basically sap green, a bit of burnt umber to get the dark areas of the tree. Um, and I'm twiddling the brush as I go. What I do is I load up the brush with paint and I spin it as I, as I go further down the branch. So it just, the paint gets thinner and smaller as it goes further away. So you start at the base of the, of the plant and you work your way up to the top. And by then the paint's running out so it's, you get smaller, finer marks. Up here, definitely lemon yellow with the sap green because the sunlight's coming into this tree here and making it almost translucent towards the end. Um, but you can see the technique there of doing the tree. I'll just sort of show you a bit about how I do that. Again, I'm not putting too much detail on. I'm, using, I'm still using the same brush. It's only two brushes I use for this whole painting, a round brush and a flat brush. Um, and that's, that's it. They're, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm almost done with that now. I'm getting there. Um, I didn't film all of it, obviously, but there you go. I'll probably put that on my Etsy store for someone if they want to buy it, but I would love to see your results. Um, please send them to me. I'd love to see what you come up with, and I'll do something a bit more simple next time. All right, stay in, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.